What's up guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Back at the Alley's WSOP area, playing at the King's Lounge. Behind me, you might see, there's a, there's a friendly face. Mariano's back there, he's playing the 1025. Unfortunately, it's a full table and I can't get in. So I'm gonna play the 510 for now. We're gonna see if uh, we can splash it up in the 510 or he finally busts someone and we can join him in the 1025 streets. But right now, playing some cash because I have an off day. I earned an off day from tournaments, really funny. So uh, I decided to go film some cash content for you guys because I know everyone loves that just a little bit more. Anyways, we're gonna buy in for $10,000 in the 510 streets. It's an uncapped 510, which is so awesome. And try to splash it up, have a good time and try to keep on winning because someone's got to fund all these tournament bullets somehow and cash game seems to be the consistent way to do so. So let's fire $10,000 into the table. Let's walk away with more. We're back in the cash game streets and sitting in the 510, I buy in for $10,000. And the first hand, I'm on the under the gun straddle for 20 and I pick up five, six of hearts. There's a cutoff raise to $75, which I think it's pretty large pre-flop, but whatever. Action folds to me and I'm happy to play this hand. I have five, six suited. It's a fun suited connector to play. So let's battle. I make the call and the flop comes queen, 10, three rainbow. And not a whole lot happening here. Action goes check, check. When the turn comes the ace of hearts, this is gonna be fun. With my flush draw now, I check on a card favoring him and he bets out 100. All right, well, I don't want to make the call out of position here for $100. I have six high and basically only going to win by calling by hitting the flush. And even then I probably won't get paid. So I'm gonna take the high variance route early on in this session and check raise to 350. I've got six high and a dream and Luckily, uh, not a whole lot of resistance here. He just folds, so it's a good start to the session. Second hand, I'm back under the gun, straddling here, and there's a cutoff open to $50, more reasonable sizing. The small blind and big blind calls, and when I spiel six, seven of hearts, I have bad intentions in my mind. Playing these suited connectors here, I think just playing heads up is a lot more beneficial as I can avoid being flushed over flushed or straight over straight or something like that. Anyways, I decided to squeeze to $250 multi-way here, trying to take down the dead money in the middle. And when the cutoff folds, but surprisingly, the small blind and the big blind found a call. So I found a way to be in position, but we're going three ways to a flop of 5532 spades. No heart, sadly, as I wish I would have a backdoor flush draw, but I have a gutter and somehow a board where I have two over cards on. So given these considerations, I decided to bet when action checks it over to me. I have all the better over pairs on this board and I decided to bet big, $600. And guess what? This doesn't work because a small blind immediately goes all in, announces a jam of about 3,000. Okay, snap, 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 fold. I don't have to talk about why I'm folding seven high on this flop. So uh, yeah, nice hand. Moving on to the next one as I lose a big chunk here. Following that, I pick up a real hand, ace, king offsuit in the small blind with the straddle on. There's a cutoff and a button limp. And here, I'm not going to be limping. I put in a raise to $125 and how fun. I get the big blind, the straddle, the cutoff, and the button calls. So <sighs> five ways to a flop we go. Let's try to hit something good. The flop is 10, six, nine, two clubs. Yep. Not much going on for me. When action checks around to the button, he bets $300 and I'm snap out of here. GG's. Take my $125, but I get called up to the 10-25 game. So I'm going to leave this 5-10 game stuck a little bit going to the mid-session update. All right. Good news. We're going to switch it up. Going up to the 10-25 game. The 5-10, not so great. Not a whole lot of action. Pretty boring game. Uh, so the good news is that we're going to be playing with our buddy Mariano. The not so great news is the game's going to be pretty tough, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be deep. I'm sure there'll be action and we're going to be involved in some big pots. The thing is, bad news. We're going to go over the results of the 5-10 game. I was in for 10,000, out for 86.95. A little bit of an L, just honestly didn't win any hands the whole time. Uh, played for about two hours, so let's grind out in the 1025 streets. I think the 50 trial is going to be on as well, and try to run it up this time. We'll see. So I'm approaching this 1025 game, stuck a little bit of money, and immediately I get dealt a hand, pocket jacks in the small blind. So let's crawl out of this hole immediately. There's a cutoff raise to $125, and I am going to be definitely raising it up with a strong hand, playing out of position, I three bet to 500. And you know what's cool? 
he makes the call. So cutoff makes the call with about six to 7,000 behind. We're going to a flop battling here, and we see a good one of 974 two hearts. Pocket jacks is only easy to play when you flop over pairs, and here we are. I bet $400 here just trying to get value from some flush draws, maybe even a nine or a bunch of other stuff that he could be holding. Anyways, for 400 here, definitely a pair that needs a lot of protection. As we all know, jacks can always lose at any point of the hand. Anyways, for 400, he decides to raise to 1,000. It's a very interesting and surprising bet to see. Didn't expect to see a raise, but I'm not folding my overpair just yet. I make the call and we're off to a turn, which comes a board pairing nine. Not great for me, and I don't think this nine's gonna hit him ever anyways, because he should never really have nine X by raising on the flop. So here we are, I check it over to him and play in flow, and this player decides to blast out 1500. He's got about $4,500 behind, and uh, yeah, I think that if he had a better hand than Jax, like a higher overpair, he should be forbetting a lot of the time being in position and against an aggressive player like me. So I think he also rarely has a 9 in the spot, so I basically put him on some draws that I'm very much ahead of right now, and for that reason, thinking that my hand has to be good right here, right now, I decided to commit his stack. I decided to check jam all in. Very weird turn of events that this hand has taken place here. Not often do you see in a three bet pot, the imposition player raising on the flop and then on the turn, I'm check jamming. Like, I don't know. All these things are very nuanced and things you don't see often, but this player goes into the tank forever. He says out loud that he's totally screwed if I have an overpair here. So that makes me feel really good about my hand. And ultimately he ends up making the call. So maybe as a seven, maybe pocket sixes, who knows? But I show my hand, we decide to run it twice as this player wanted to see two rivers and I'm happy to oblige and the rivers come clean, I scoop. So pocket jacks and immediately sitting down in the 10-25 game, I stack an opponent and win a pile of chips and just like that, I'm unstuck for the day now. All right, with this session starting off on the right foot, let's play uh, another hand. We're playing a seven way $100 PLO double board bomb pot. We're gonna go to a flop of 967 rainbow. Flop number two comes 885. And I just looked down at ace 10, eight, four. Two clubs, what the hell is going on? I have trips with the top kicker and I have the nuts straight on the other board. Uh, the complete world and dream when you're playing these PLO double word bomb pots. Anyways, a player in early position, a woman bets out $300 into 700 in the middle. And basically sitting with nut nuts, uh, I'm gonna raise cause I have such a good hand. I have the nuts on both board basically. So I raise it up to 1400 and fold around to this player. Maybe I can isolate this opponent and go to a turn heads up. And that's what happens. She ends up making the call for 1100 more. She's playing with about three to $3,500 behind. So let's go to a turn, which comes the four of hearts on top and the king of clubs on bottom. So that only means I have still the nut straight on top. And now I have trips improved to a flush draw on the bottom. Things are just getting better and better for me, which is rare in the PLO streets. She checks it over to me and I decided to bet out 1500, basically just trying to milk her in with a small bet. And I basically just don't want to force her to fold. I don't want to jam and scare any worse hands out of the way because I have basically the best hand on both boards. And ultimately she thinks about it for a very long time and says out loud, she's either going to shove or fold. Maybe not the decision point that I wanted her to think about because I just wanted her to call, you know, be friendly and call. But ultimately, she ends up folding. I don't get any more money, but I'll take it. It's very rare to be in a situation where you're confident to have the best hand on both boards in a bomb pot. The next hand we dive into, I have 6-7 offsuit in the straddle here and folds around to our buddy Mariano in the big blind. Sure, you're all familiar with him and he decides to limp here and I decide to check my option with 6-7 offsuit. We're going to a flop which comes 5-6-7 to diamonds, so top two pair is really nice. He bets out $50 into the field and I am in no mood to just flat calling the small bets. With top two pair on a very draw heavy flop, I decided to raise it up to $200 and for 150 more, he makes the call. 
Now, going to a turn which comes in Ace doesn't really change a whole lot besides being up against Ace-5 or Ace-6 or something. Anyways, he checks in. I bet for value $300 now. That's the price of poker, and he obliges for $300. Going to a river now, which comes a sad nine. Oh, I don't love that. Any eight makes a straight board a lot more connected. So when he checks it over to me, I just check it back. And Mariano is nice enough to say that I got it. I show a six. He says I win. And I show my two pair to expect the chips being pushed my way. Too bad. Oh, wait. And there was a guy. Yeah, there, there was a guy. <laughs> he has ace eight off suit for a straight. Slow rolled me in this pot here. Nice hand, sir. Well played. Nice slow roll. I hate you. I'll take the rebate. <laughs> Fuck you. Put that rebate in there. <laughs> Following the Mariano slow roll, I pick up ace queen of clubs in the cutoff. Really good hand to play. So when the low jack raises to 100, I decide to raise over that amount to 400. This player makes the call for 300 more, and when he's playing about 20,000 total. So maybe this pot can get big. We're going to a flop of king, nine, eight, rainbow with one club. He checks it over to me, and I definitely have mixed feelings about betting or checking. And in this exact scenario, I decided to check this one back. Now we're going to a turn which comes the ace of diamonds. So that's sick. He checks it once again and sitting with top pair on a board that should really favor me as the three better. I decided to pile in money and bet out 1,000. Close to the size of the pot, maybe a little bit more than the size of the pots. And for this large amount, you might be asking yourself, why the hell did I bet so big? I don't know, good question guys. I don't know either, but for 1,000, he decides to call. So we've got some action. Going to a river now, which comes a board pairing nine. It's not amazing, mainly because now I chop versus any ace and my kicker doesn't play, but here we are. He checks it over to me and I think checking back has to be the best option here, especially against a really good player that could put us in a tough spot. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for value and I decide to bet 10% of the pot. I bet about $300 here. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking throughout this entire hand. Why did I bet so big on the turn and then bet so small on the river? Uh, whatever. I like pain, I think, because after a while of thinking, this player raises to 5,000 freaking dollars. Oh, dear God. I hate my life. I'm kind of frustrated, not at this opponent, but frustrated at myself for making this mistake of betting the river, even though I know that a check back makes the most sense. I'm annoyed and I don't want to call for a chop. Maybe in some outrageous world, I could actually jam as a bluff, but you know, it seems too likely. Maybe he has a full house and uh, yeah, I don't really want to risk so much more money to win such a small amount. I decided to just fold and move on. He later tells me he had ace 10 and we were chopping. So yeah, calling 5k for a chop seems like a nightmare and nice hand. Well played to my opponent here. Hand after that, I pick up 10-9 of diamonds in the cutoff. Unfortunately, there's no straddle here. So we're just playing 10-25. There's an ungun player who limps for $25. Mariano raises to 100. And it's time to get into the mix with our buddy here. I'm going to three bet him to $400 as we're playing super deep stacked. And when the unlinked player cold calls after limping the 25 bucks, uh, here we are now going to a flop of Jack 9-9. How sick is this? Action checks to me, and I bet out $225, and I'm going to get some red alarm bells going off here because he sighs very visibly, then calls. This seems to be one of the most reliable tells in live poker when someone is seemingly very disappointed and upset but still puts money in the middle. I'm not feeling comfortable, but I do have a 9 and a super strong hand. We're going to a turn which comes the seven of hearts. He checks for a second time and I have a, such a strong hand. I saw the read on the flop, but I still have to go for value, right? I bet $800 now in this spot with trips and he once again sighs. What? What are you doing, bro? It, is this Hollywooding or what? I'm thinking in my head that if this player goes all in, I'm just going to puke and feel really disgusting about my hand. And then... Ah, uh, he does. He jams. It's like $1,500 more. $2,300 total all in. And this Hollywood just seems so obvious. Like, come on, man. If I had aces or a one pair hand, I fold. But I'm sitting with 10-9 and I have trip nines 
it's insane to think about folding here because did he limp in with pocket jacks? And does he only have jack nine? Because that's the only hand that I actually lose to on the flop that's super strong. Maybe he could also have nine seven now, but there's very few combos I lose to. And uh, it's kind of ridiculous to fold such a good hand, but I do think about it for a while and I just don't know what to do. I have trip nines and I'm actually thinking about folding, but you know, after thinking about it for a while, like I have such a strong hand, I have to pay this guy off even if I'm behind, like whatever. If you got it, you got it. I'm annoyed. I make the call and he shows jack nine. Oh, freaking course. Yeah, why not? And of course, salt on the wound. The dealer gives me the river 10 for a full house, which obviously is no good because I was drawing dead on the flop. Pretty annoying to double this guy up. And you know what's even more annoying? He immediately grabs his rack and leaves the table. Chips up, grabs his rack, hit and run, double up. Good for you, buddy. Kind of annoying. You know, obviously this player has every right to do so. It's a public game and you can hit and run and do whatever you want, but pretty tilting experience. I pay him off $2,365 total and whatever. I'm kind of on tilt right now, but it is what it is. That's poker. So when you're on tilt, you decide to double straddle because that's what I'm doing. I double straddle to $100 and action folds around to Mariano. He limps in for $100 here and I peel pocket sevens. It's a really good hand. It's a pair. So I'm going to try to get more money in the middle or just take it down preflop. I raise to $400 and guess what? Mariano decides to limp three bet to $1,900. Oh my God. It's tough spot after tough spot. I'm a little uncomfortable, but I know against a good player, he's going to have plenty of hands that I'm ahead of. So I make the call. Playing about 20,000 deep, this hand might get wild. Let's see a flop of 10, 8, 5. So two cards over my pair. I, I don't love the situation. And Ashton goes, check, check. The turn comes a jack. So I have a gut shot straight shot now. Uh, luckily, he checks. So maybe this hand isn't going to get too wild here with almost 4,000 in the middle. Ashton goes, check, check. Once again, the river three doesn't change anything. And once again, Ashton goes, check, check. How is pocket sevens ever good here? I'm not sure. But Mariano shows us ace three of clubs. Phew, nice to have him river a pair. He didn't have to blast off as a bluff. And I'm going to win this one with pocket sevens. Take down about $2,000 here. This hand was recently seen on Mariano's vlog, so you guys might have already seen this one, but here I have ace queen of clubs on the button. You're gonna see this from my perspective where cutoff Mariano opens it up to 150. I have ace queen of clubs here and it's a really good hand, so I'm going to three bet him to $500. Folds around to him and Mariano makes the call, so going to a flop of king eight three to hearts, just nothing going on for ace queen of clubs, so action's gonna go check check here. When the turn comes a four, Mariano bets $50. I look at him like, like what, are you, what are you doing, man? You bet one big blind? Anyways, <laughs> unsure of what to do. I'm priced in to hit an ace or queen, right? And maybe ace queen high can be good. I have done nothing. I make the call for $50. The river comes a jack. Doesn't change much, and I still have ace queen high for nut nothing. He bets $150. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know. This man is way too rich and clearly doesn't need any more money, but what the hell is this? Okay, what's 150 bucks in a pot that's really big? I make the call and he shows me four or five of hearts and he celebrates like a little girl. Dances after getting max value from ace queen. Nice hand, friend. Nice hand. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, I pick up queen jack off suit in the hijack and raise things up to 150, folds around to Mariano on my right and he makes the call. So we're gonna battle it out once again, vlogger on vlogger. Going to a flop of ace 10 deuce, two spades and a heart with some Broadway cards here on board. I have a gut shot straight draw to basically the nuts. I bet pots about $300 and for 300, Mariano continues. When the turn is the ace of hearts bringing in two flush draws, he checks once again. And I think I have a decision point to either bet or check back. And, you know, I certainly feel pulled and inclined to do either or. And in game, I decided to just check this one. I think it's okay to have some give ups here. But the river comes the king of hearts, Bink. Nice to see that the backdoor heart draw does get there, but he checks for a third time. And okay, I have Broadway. I'm going to bet big. I also can have some bluffs here on this board as well. So I bet out $1,000. And Mariano thinks about this decision for quite some time before check raising this river to 4,000. Jeez, that is really big. What is happening? 
I think about this spot for a while and I recheck my cards, seeing I have the Jack of Hearts, which is actually really relevant. I blocked some flushes that he could have. So what is he even doing this with? Does he just have like trip aces that he's never going to play this way? Does he have a full house? Does he actually have a flush? I have no idea. Obviously, Mariano is really good to have bluffs in this spot. And with Queen Jack and Broadway, I'm sitting between a rock and a hard place. I have such a good bluff catcher with a good card in my hand to call a raise. But I feel like it would be suicidal for him to bluff on a board that favors me. So I think about this for a while. I just don't think that he's crazy enough to have too many bluffs in this spot. And I just let it go. I show his vlog, but the Queen Jack offsuit, the Broadway is going straight into the muck. And he's nice enough to show us Queen Ten of Hearts, which he featured also on his vlog. So nice hand by him. He owns me the past few hands, and it's time to rack up. All right, let's uh, let's go over some stuff because I just played two hours of five, ten, twenty, and then I just played another two and a half hours of ten, twenty-five, fifty. Quite the battle. So uh, the numbers were, I think I lost like thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred forty dollars, something like that, in the five ten streets or ten twenty streets, and then went and battled at the twenty five fifty. Ran pretty good, I would be honest with you. Uh, only way to run good and only way to win is to run good. So let's go over the numbers. I was in the game for twenty three thousand six hundred and ninety five dollars. That's exactly how much I would cash in for. The ninety five is a little silly, but whatever. And then I was out of the game for 28,985. Those numbers are correct. I memorized it. I looked at it before I recorded this outro, but that's a success. Definitely a good session. Even after paying off that guy 10,9 over, or Jack 9 over 10,9, I wanted to save myself the extra $1,500. A little annoying and tilting that he just like snapped left and it was a quick, easy hit and run. Unfortunate, I guess that happens. You're, you are absolutely right to leave whenever you want. It's just just whatever you know I'm annoyed not happy about it but it's always nice to book a win it's nice to run good pretty much for the most part and that's it another day of questioning myself why do i play tournaments when i can just do this all the time play cash not win all the time obviously i'm running well in the cash game streets at least but it does question why i spend 10 hour days 12 hour days playing tournaments just breaking buy-ins and i could just play cash for four or five hours and make a couple thousand and you guys love the content, play some big pots. I'm glad it all worked out. But thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sticking to the end. I'll see you guys in the next one. Comment down below what you guys think about these cash game videos because I know, I, I just want to know how much you guys prefer them over tournaments. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next videos. Peace.